Hello and welcome to the JK Feather Ranch channel. Today we're going to simulate a power outage so that we can run our house from our car. Since we already installed a 2000 watt inverter in a previous video, we'll be using a 12 gauge extension cord to take full advantage of that power. If your inverter has a GFCI like ours does, one of these two to three prong grounding adapters is necessary or else it will trip immediately. Uh, this is safe because ground and neutral are tied together in the panel and this replicates exactly the way the utility feed to your house is done. And the other end gets plugged into our generator inlet. This adapter ensures that both phases of the panel get power even though we still won't be able to run anything that requires 220. Now we'll turn on our interlock and any breakers that require power. The solar panels will stay off because backfeeding the inverter may damage it and I'm not sure that would work anyways. Different cars will have different ways of enabling accessory mode, camp mode, or in the case of the bolt, just leaving the car on uh, in a way that it won't turn off. The way to do that is going to be different for every car, but for the bolt, you need to first open the driver's door, then put the vehicle in neutral. As you'll notice, the pedestrian alert noise is playing, so we'll use the switch we installed previously to turn that off. And then you can get out of the car and close the door. Now we do have the Emporia View energy monitor installed on our house, and it looks like we've settled into what I would call an idle state of about 350 watts that's running the fridge and freezer, but pretty much not doing anything else uh, except for some random items that are probably plugged into circuits we've forgotten about. Uh, we are using some lighting. The Wi-Fi router is running. I'm sure some vampire electronics are running, but uh, that's where we currently stand. We are using a couple things that other people wouldn't, such as misting fans to keep some of our animals cool that we can't really turn off. Now, since it is apparently going to be 108 degrees today, we do need some air conditioning. I did deliberately install 120 volt mini splits in each of our bedrooms so that we would have the ability to run them off of a generator, inverter, or something like that. Obviously, we cannot run the mini splits in the main part of the house uh, because they are 240, but we can at least keep the bedroom cool. Now, until it cools the room back down, it is going to draw a higher amount of power, although I've never seen it go above about 700 watts. Once we get down to temperature and it's just maintaining it, it usually draws between 1 to 200, although since it's so hot today, that might increase. Now that things have settled down a bit and the mini split's only using about 350 watts, I think I can afford the power to make some breakfast. Let's start with coffee. Add in some chocolate milk. We've got ourselves a fine iced mocha. Since we've got a gas stove, no worries there, except we don't have to light it with a match. And we can use the vent fan while we're cooking. Now this is the part that worries me just a little, and that is that I like bacon on my breakfast burrito, and since my wife says I'm weird, I like that bacon 
thoroughly crispified and burned in the microwave. Now I've turned off the mini split temporarily, the fridge, freezer, and all unnecessary lights. Let's see if we can make this work. It's going to splatter grease everywhere unless I put something on top to block that. Since it is a little warm in the rest of the house and I can't turn on the other mini splits, I am going to go ahead and turn on the swamp cooler. Now if you live somewhere humid, you've probably never seen one of these before. What it basically is, is a fan that blows air over a moistened pad soaked with water. And in a dry climate, the act of adding humidity to the air actually lowers the temperature and uses far less electricity than an air conditioner does. Now, as I said earlier, it's going to be over 100 degrees today. That's just too hot out to use the inverter at full capacity without overheating it. So here is the cooling solution I came up with. So the time is now about 12 o'clock, and while I was looking at my power usage, I noticed that the fridge was using a whole lot more than normal, and caused me to start pulling from the 12 volt battery, because I exceeded the output of the DC-DC converter in the car. Uh, the reason for that is because the fridge had gone into a defrost cycle, which is not something I need it doing during the hot part of the day when I'm also using air conditioning. So for now, I have turned that off. Uh, it should keep everything cold, uh, well, until I end the test, but normally it would keep everything cold until nighttime when things cool down outside and I don't have to use as much AC. The plan would be to let the fridge run overnight and then turn it off during the day again. Who's a good kitty? Who's a good kitty? You're a good kitty. Now that I've taken a shower, I do need to dry these luscious locks of mine. So uh, I should be able to run the hair dryer on low. I did temporarily put the mini split in eco mode while I do this, but I don't think it should be a problem. Turns out I can actually use high and be fine. Now, my wife and I did both take showers today. Our water heater is a heat pump, so although it only uses between three and 400 watts while it's running, uh, it does take 220 because it has the backup elements that we just don't use. Uh, it has been off since eight o'clock this morning when I started this test, but it did have enough hot water for us to both take showers and we can still get some hot water out of it. The one last thing I want to show you is something that we never would have even thought about until last year, but once you have it, you don't want to do without it, even when the power's out. And that is the bidet. 
Well, apparently it's smart enough to know not to work when there's no one sitting on it, even when I put a plate over the toilet to make sure it's covered. So, uh, here I am with a junk pair of pants on, and, uh, let's give it a test, shall we? Ah, the things we do for views. Now let's test the drying function. And that concludes our test. After removing our makeshift cooling, the inverter is warm to the touch, but certainly not hot. Obviously everything survived the test. And now for the part you're probably most interested in. The car says we used 11.3 kilowatt hours. Adding everything up from Emporia View, the house directly consumes 7.7. That's honestly not terrible efficiency, considering the power has to go from the big battery to the 12 volt battery through the inverter to the house, as well as everything required to keep the car operational, run the cooling pump, cooling fans, uh, battery conditioning if necessary, things like that. Uh, it has been eight hours, so in a 24-hour period, assuming this level of heavy usage, which is highly unlikely, considering many of you won't have to run air conditioning, and also it is expected to cool off significantly at night to where we either won't need it or will barely need it. Uh, but assuming three times the usage that we uh, saw, that would be 33 kilowatt hours over a day. The car would technically have enough to run it for two days, although that would make the battery completely empty. And our power outages here really don't last longer than 12 hours at most. So I don't see this ever being a problem for us. But like I said, the usage should uh, significantly drop off at night, so we could easily get two days out of it. Possibly three, although that might be pushing it. If you found this video interesting, helpful, or informative, uh, please consider subscribing to our channel. Also, feel free to like and leave a comment below, and thanks for watching! Uh, the reason for that is because the fridge went into a defrost cycle, which is can you stop playing with the tripod, please?